Come into alignment with his purpose and his and his plan and fulfilling our calling. That is a subject today. It's another confusing sub, sub, subject, actually. You know, sometimes we think fulfilling God's plan and calling for our life is to be on the limelight, the spotlight. We have to be in front of a TV screen and everybody should know our name and we have to have this fame and I have to do this. That's not how God's kingdom work. Everybody doesn't need to be on the spotlight. Everybody needs to, doesn't need to be a superstar. Everybody is not going to be. But that virus, it's like that American dream virus has infected us. And to get rid of that virus, we need to go through some de infecting or what is that um, sanit sanitization in a kingdom sanitization to get rid of that American dream virus that infected and polluted the world actually disinfectant disinfectant yeah thank you Thomas to disinfect from that virus and and the gospel of the kingdom is only the true disinfectant that is effective so we are entering to the second stage of this course today because we spent a strat time on purpose because that's one of the most confused subject for most people, especially believers, Christians. They are confused about their purpose. So we have to re and reinstate, reestablish that foundation. Life needs to be built on purpose. If you don't have purpose, there's nothing will work. If the foundation is not there, nothing can be built right and nothing will stand, nothing will remain, nothing will last long. So let's pray today for the Holy Spirit to help us to understand his heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this particular moment in time. Time is so important to you, Father. Either your word starts with the phrase, in the beginning. It starts with that time. You started, you know how to begin something when there's no time. How do you begin something if there's no time? How do you know when to begin? But you are the beginning, Father. You are the time. You set the time in motion. We bless you. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for the kingdom school. Thank you for enlightening our hearts. Thank you for opening our spirit to receive from you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for your help and your guidance. Give me the words to speak as I ought to speak, Father, to make it clear what exactly that you're called us to do to fulfill the purpose that you have for us. I thank you for your grace. I bless everyone who's going to be watching this after this lesson is over, recorded. I thank you for your glory to fall upon them, opening our eyes and our understanding. And we bless you. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor for what you're doing. We love you, Father. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen and amen. So today's lesson is discovering your calling key to fulfill your purpose. So now that we have discovered our purpose, the next step is to discover or recognize what we are called to do. You're also heard, if you're saved, you're called. Every believer is called by God, but not everyone is called to do the same thing. Our purpose is same. Entire human species is combined we have the same purpose, which is to rule, to maximize, to have dominion over this planet Earth. And to fulfill that purpose, God calls each one of us to do something different in that nation because in his kingdom, kingdom is a nation, and that kingdom has different departments. Everybody cannot be prime ministers. <laughs> Everybody cannot be in the parliament. 
that if that nation needs to work, somebody had to deliver the milk in the morning, right? Somebody has to bring the newspaper. <laughs> somebody has to sell food. Somebody has to farm. Somebody has to take care of the road. Somebody has to teach in school. Somebody has to design products. Somebody has to manufacture. So there is enormous, innumerable type of opportunities and places and responsibilities for a nation to run. So for God's kingdom to run, to function, there has to be people in every 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 opportunity and to fulfill every responsibility so it can function. There are people who call to run banks, you know, to be business people. That's their calling. There are, they, we need hairdressers. As long as our hair keep growing, we need hairdressers. We need people to cook. We need people to clean. We need people to make clothes, to design. All those are callings by God, but the fulfill, but the question is, are we doing it to fulfill our assignment in God's kingdom, or are we doing it just to make some money or trying to be successful or whatever other reasons that is out there? So may the Holy Spirit give you the revelation on exactly what you're called to do through this course. And God doesn't need to appear to everybody to tell them what he's called them to do, just like he appeared to Moses or um, Samuel or Saul in the New Testament who became Paul. God doesn't need to appear. I thought if I was called to be in ministry, God has to appear to me. I have to have a Damascus Road experience or angel needs to appear in my bedroom or I have to have this supernatural dream of some kind if God really called me to do. I didn't have any of those. No burning bush came, no Damascus road came. The old thing I had was a desire in my heart to go to a Bible school. That was the first thing that happened. Just a desire in my heart that said, I need to leave home. I need to leave this place. The moment I stepped out, it is like God took over the rest of my life. Until today, I am in that covering. I am in the covering of his protection, his glory, his provision. After 30 some, um, 30 some years, you know, it is, it is an amazing life. I won't trade this for anything else. I don't have a second guess to go and try to get a job or try to make some money. I wouldn't do for nothing because there's nothing like fulfilling your calling. But as I was reading in one of the books yesterday, crime is committed by people every day. What is a crime in God's kingdom? When you try to do something that you are not called to do, that is a crime in God's kingdom. When you function outside of your calling, that's called a lawlessness in the Bible, in the New Testament. When you try to do something that you're not called to do, when you step outside of your jurisdiction, trying to copy somebody or because of ambition, because of passion, because of whatever, you commit a crime in God's kingdom and you get into trouble. What is the trouble? Provision won't come. Sometimes people get sickness and all kinds of trouble and accidents and cause so much of damage. Because when you function out of your calling, you're outside of God's protection, you're outside of God's provision, you're outside of God's favor. Just because something sounds good, just because somebody else is doing something, that's not an idea that you're called to do that. Then you get this... Um, get into this journey that you are not happy. You don't feel fulfilled. Like I said before, you can fulfill what God has called to do and sleep under a tree and you will be happy. You will feel fulfilled. So what is calling? What is the definition of calling? I have a few definitions of calling in the Bible. Calling is an act of God to release you to fulfill your destiny or purpose in the kingdom. So when God called us in eternity, 
Actually, God called us in eternity, not when we were born or when we were 25 years old. That calling was done outside of time before you came here. That's where God created you because of that calling upon your life. And more than we are committed to fulfilling that calling, God wants us to fulfill that calling because if we didn't fulfill what he's called us to do, his kingdom is at loss. And that's why God's kingdom is such a, in such a ruin now. It's not functioning, it's not manifesting because people are caught up into this, I don't know what I call it, like Jesus warned in Matthew chapter 7, you know, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, enter into his kingdom. Because he said, many will come. Many will come at the last day and say, Lord, we cast out demons. We prophesied. We did many wonders in your name. And Jesus looked at them and said, I never knew you. You work lawlessness. What is a lawlessness? Working outside of your calling, not doing what you're called to do, but you're caught up into this ambition of using God's gift to build a name, to build a ministry, to build whatever. And at the end, everything is gone. <laughs> God, Jesus said, I never knew you because you were doing something that I never called you to do. You're working lawlessness. You, you're committing crime. So what is a calling? Calling is the way God to tell each individual the exact plan and assignment he has for them in the kingdom. Which department in the kingdom do you fit in? What is your responsibility in God's kingdom? How do we know that? By recognizing what he has called us to do. Just like a nation, just think about the nation. Everybody doesn't do the same thing in a nation. Every billion people, one billion people in India, they have different responsibility that for the nation to function. But are they all doing what they're supposed to be doing? No, majority of them are not. The third definition of calling, what is calling? Calling is the allotment from God to tell you in which area he wants you to work in his kingdom. Do you fit in the kingdom economy, kingdom government? Do you fit into kingdom farming? Do you fit into kingdom media? Do you fit into kingdom printing? Um, whatever, what, what is it that God wants to release through you to this planet earth to manifest his kingdom? Which aspect of God's kingdom does he want to manifest through you? Where is that piece of the puzzle that you fit fits you in that spot. You fit into a very specific place, a specific role that nobody else can fulfill or fit in. Another one, what is calling your vision or dream or calling is God's way or system of providing for you in his kingdom. How do we find our provision in God's kingdom? It, by simply fulfilling Fulfilling what we are called to do. That is, the, that is the key to finding our provision. Our purpose is there. It's already established by God. But calling is something that we need to discover and, and try begin to function in it. We want all starts with the big bang. You know, people wait for to start this something huge and something big. You know, when I, after I came back from Bible school, do you know what I started doing? Teaching Sunday school children. <laughs> Five-year-olds, that's where I started. And, and Saturday evening, sweep the church building, preparing for Sunday morning. That was my job. After finishing that Bible school, you know, I left my home when I was 18, came back at 21. You know what I was doing? Sweeping the floor with a broom. And you know, this floor is a cement floor, not a marble floor, not a, something so beautiful. Dust flares up, you know. It's like an atom bomb exploded when you sweep it. <laughs> and there's no mask or anything those days. So you, you eat that dust. That was my job. That was my calling. <laughs> 
I didn't even know anything about the kingdom that time. Nothing. I was so dumb. I, I didn't know nothing about the kingdom. <laughs> now, when people come to the kingdom school, you know, they want to start with the big bang. They want to make this million dollar and they have asked me, Abraham, I don't have a mansion. What is wrong here? Well, maximize the opportunity that you have. Maximize what, get into where God has opened the door for you right now. You know, like somebody said, you cannot create the wave, but when God sends the wave, ride on it. Don't try to create the wave. You cannot create the wave, but when God sends a wave, you can ride on it. You can do that. So if you are saved, you're called. Everybody say this after me. I am saved, so I am called. So don't question that ever in again. Is there a doubt in your heart? Am I called? Yes, you are called. So purpose is the same for all, but calling differs from person to person everybody's called even if i even if you're called to preach the kingdom there will be little different than how i am doing it because it is different you are different than me or somebody else so second peter 1 verse 10 says therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call an election sure for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Calling has to do with your assignment. Election has to do with your salvation. Who saved you? Why he saved you? Um, you know, half of the world is afraid of losing salvation. You know, Peter denied Christ. He didn't lose his salvation. And he didn't lose his apostleship either. Jesus did not cancel his apostleship because he denied Christ. According to the religious people, and if you deny Christ, you lose your salvation, right? <laughs> you deny Christ. You lost it. You destined for hell. But here comes Jesus restoring Peter, asking him, not telling him, I love you, Peter, but asking Peter if you love him. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I would think, you know, God would come and tell Peter, I love you, Peter, don't go. But Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me? That is the greatest crime. Stop loving God. Why? Because as long as you love God, all things will work out for our good. That's what the Bible says to those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. So two things to make sure you're calling and your election, if you do those two things, what happens? You will never stumble. Never stumble. What does that mean? Never stumble. <laughs> you won't fall. You won't get destroyed. You won't get um, rejected by or left to be attacked by the enemy. Those two things are important. Make your calling and election sure. And just because you have a desire, that doesn't mean all those desires are comes from God. We have to know what comes from God and what comes from our own ambition and what comes from the peaks that we had the previous night. So examples of calling from the Bible. David was called to be a king. But how did he start? He started feeding the sheep. That's how his life started. Nobody knew about David. He didn't, he didn't just appear as a king. There was a process. So in order to fulfill your calling, there's a process that you have to go through. And, and in those processes, you'll be alone. You'll be by yourself. Nobody will be there to help you, to support you, uh, to stand with you, to walk with you. You will be crying for help. You will be alone feeling rejected, feeling lonely. It's like, why am I here? Why am I alive on this planet Earth? David has to go through that. Paul has to go through that. Paul was called to be an apostle. Moses was called to be a deliverer. Joseph was called to be a prime minister. That was his calling. 
Can God call somebody today to be a prime minister? Of course. You need, we need uh, training places, you know, kingdom schools to train to become a prime minister. I'm glad to hear you know, some of those seminaries or cemeteries are being closed because they're running out of students. Nobody wants to go to seminary these days because it's outdated. That system has come to an end. The, the, the religious church system we have been following has aspired. God is doing something new. He is birthing something. And Esther was called to be a queen. That was her calling, to be a queen, to be a king. She didn't know that. It just happened by chance. She was minding her own business. She didn't have any parents. She was living with her uncle. And here comes the knock at her door. You've been selected to go to the palace to see if you will be the next queen. Joseph of Arimathea was called to be a council member. Noah was called to build an ark. Abraham was called to be a nation builder. All these people are called to be called to do something different, but their purpose was same to have dominion over one area of life, to rule over, as we learned. So we are called by God. When did God call us? This verse is very important. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 says, who has saved us and called us. Okay, so if you're saved, you're called. With a holy calling, not a according to your works. That is another thing that we have to get over ourselves that we think, sometimes we think, you know, God called us because of my holiness or my discipline or my spirituality, my prayer, my fasting, nothing, or some mistakes I did. None of those matters, not according to our works. When God called you, he did not take anything that you did to consideration. Nothing to do with you. My calling has nothing to do with me. Everybody say that after me. My calling has nothing to do with me. It is God who called me. He doesn't call, call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. But according to his own purpose, see, every time we talk about purpose, God says it is his own purpose. All things work together for those who are called according to his purpose. God has only one purpose for humans. According to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus, when? Before time began. So when did God save you? Before time began. When did he call you? Before time began. It has nothing to do with you. So shake off that religious belief that God saved you. And you staying saved because of your personal holiness. Get off that religious horse. God is the one who saved you and called you. And you remain saved because of his grace. Because of his protection. He is the one who is able to present us before the Father. So he saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works. So anytime the devil comes and tells you, you, you missed your calling because you did something wrong, tell the devil, God didn't call me based on my works and get out of my face in Jesus' name. And he will flee. So never ever think that you missed your calling because of some mistakes or wrong choices you made. Nobody can destroy your calling except you. Nobody has that authority. Nobody has that power to cancel anybody's calling. We can do it, our own stupid choices and keep on making that stupid choices. But God always is in the process of restoration. So Jeremiah on verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
So Jeremiah existed before he was conceived in the womb. Each one of us existed in God, with God, before we were conceived in our mother's womb. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained to you a prophet to the nations. So when did God ordain Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations? Before he arrived here. Our calling was done before time began. Not after we went to the Bible schools. That Bible school thing that started for me, that was just a step I took toward fulfilling that. Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. I would encourage you to do a, a study on all the words in the Bible that talks about callings of people. God calls us according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I just said that verse two times already. According to his purpose, there is only one purpose, which is to rule this planet. For the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, Bible never talks about a personal purpose, it's always the purpose of God. According to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. So there are 10 keys to discovering your calling. How does God communicate what he has called us to do. There's, this, this 10 keys are not exclusive. God can use any way or form and people or systems that he wants to, to communicate what we are called to do. The number one key is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the only person who knows the blueprint of our life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12 says, I has not seen, ear hath not heard, neither entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for those who love him. But the next verse says, verse 10 says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit because the spirit searches all things. Holy Spirit searches the heart of God. And then the next verse is, no one knows what is in the heart of a person except his spirit. So does nobody knows what is in the heart of God except the spirit of God. Holy Spirit searches out the mind and the heart of God concerning our life. And he discovers those secrets. And his responsibility is to communicate with us at the right time when we need to hear it. So it is important that you build a relationship, a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. Call him. Call him by his name. Holy Spirit, please help me. Anytime you need help, talk to him in person. Holy Spirit is not just power. He's not smoke. He's not oil. He's not a bird. He's a person the third person of the Trinity. All those other things are symbols of him, oil and fire and dove comes down on Jesus. These are all symbols, but he's a real person more than your mother. <laughs> more real than our mother. So you can talk to the Holy Spirit and he talks to you. God is always talking to us. That's one of the things that amazes me the most. Always he's talking. We may not hear it, we may not recognize it, but in our spirit man, there is a constant communication going on between God and ours and us. It's a constant flow of thoughts. You don't need to hear any thundering, you don't need to hear any lightning. 
it's like an inspired form of flow of thoughts, continuous flow. That's how God speaks to us. The second key to discovering your calling is the desire of your heart. Bible says God will fulfill the desires of your heart. What is that desire that comes into your heart that doesn't go away? Doesn't matter how much you sleep, how many years you old to become, it just stays there. You know, there are different desires, desires of your mind, desires of your flesh, and the desires of your spirit man. I am talking about the desires of your spirit man, not your mind, not your flesh or your body, but the desire that is in your heart, in your spirit man. That's what happened to me. All I had was a desire to go to a Bible school. And I jumped. I left. Thank God I left. Otherwise, I, would have, I wouldn't be alive today. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Gifting and skills. What is the natural gift that God gave to you? What are you good at naturally? That could be a good start to discovering your calling. That's how David began functioning in what he was called to do. You know, he didn't start as a king. Just like I started, I started teaching Sunday school children, five-year-olds. The Lord is my shepherd. Repeat this after me. <laughs> I should have taught them Genesis 1, 26. You know, that's the first verse that you should teach any child. I didn't know that at that time. I said, Jesus loves me. This I know. God so loved the world. And these kids sat there and laughed and pinched each other. You know, that was my, that was my life. So what is it? What are you gifting it? Because I was not good in music or sports or anything, but I could teach. Who did I teach? Sunday school children. So don't worry about not having any opportunity. There's a big door that God hasn't opened to you. Find some children on your street. Teach them Genesis 126. <laughs> So what is your gifting? Are you good at organizing, leading, singing, teaching, sleeping? No, that's not a gift. Eating, no, that's not a gift either. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, my gift is eating and sleeping. <laughs> That's the gift of your flesh, not the gift that God gave to us. What are you good at, you know? What is the gift that God puts in you other than eating and sleeping? Passion. You know, Moses had this passion to deliver his people. What grieves you? What makes you cry? When he saw, when Moses saw his people were afflicted by the Egyptians. It grieved him and it prompted him or provoked him to take an action. And he killed an Egyptian. That was him trying to step into what God has called him to do on his own strength. And what happened as a result? Another 40 years back in the back of the desert. Another 40 years of training. Until every ounce of ambition, ounce of trying to be successful, deliver something on his own, was gone out of Moses. And finally, when God's time came, Moses doesn't want to do it anymore. He said, go and choose Thomas. Thomas is ready. <laughs> he is full of fire. I can't even speak. And Moses tried to talk himself out of his calling. And that's how God works. When you give up, when you say it's not going to happen anymore. And that's when God shows up. And God will wait until that happens. And we try to help God, we get into trouble. So that is the next point, actually. What makes you angry or grieved? You know, then another stage happened in my life. I remember a, a stage, this is way, this was like 15 years ago, I was traveling one of those three-wheel 
taxis in India. You know, some people call it tuk-tuk or rickshaw, this electric three wheels taxi. I was traveling in one of those with a friend of mine in the city of Chennai. You know, I think the third, third or fourth largest city in India. And so what happens in India when you stop at a traffic light, you know, beggars come begging, you know, they will knock at your window of your car, you know, ma, give me something. And my child, they'll have two children on their back, some ladies. <laughs> and I have seen this hundreds of times because that's where I grew up. But that particular day, something different and interesting happened. So we were in, a, in this three-wheel taxi, stopped at a traffic light, and I looked and I saw this little girl maybe like a three-year-old playing in the mud, wearing like a torn underwear. And when I saw that little girl, I started to cry. I started to weep, you know? Then I looked at my friend who was sitting next to me and I saw him crying too. I was like, what is going on here? I have seen hundreds of children like that on the streets of India. But that particular day, something hit my spirit man. And God said, you need to do something about this. And I said, what am I supposed to do about this? <laughs> the only thing I knew at that time to do something concerning like that was to start an orphanage. So out of my assumption, me and my friend, we rented a small old house, chased monkeys out and bats out. We started an orphanage in the city of Chennai. <laughs> oh my Lord, my God. That was an another season. And I had that orphanage for almost 15 years. Close to 100 children went through a program. And James Abraham, who you see now doing this media, and shooting all these things, who grew up in our orphanage. He's one of my kids. That's why he became my son. <laughs> because I brought him up by God's grace. And there's another, there are many of them like that in different places. Of, um, and one of them, <laughs> oh my gosh, one of those kids' dream was to go to Hillsong, Australia, to become a worship leader. You know, this guy, he was passionate about music, you know, so he started learning music. I bought him a guitar. He became a guitar player, a lead guitar player. I bought like 25 keyboards, to be honest with you, in my life to give to people. So this particular kid, Holy Spirit help me, I don't know if I share this or not, so his dream was to go to Hillsong, Australia, Sydney, to study at that Bible school to, to become, because he loved the Hillsong music. Um, so that dream came. So I said, Lord, if that's your plan, open a door for him to go to Sydney, Australia. And God did. God opened the door. I flew him to Sydney, Australia and got admission at this Hillsong Bible School for two years. But that was a sad story, actually. Uh, it didn't go well for him. So he came back, sold the guitar I bought him. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit of God. I still grieve about it. But that's another story. So the question is, what makes you grieve or angry? You know, Moses became angry when he saw, I saw this little girl on the side of the road. I, I was grieving in my heart, I, in my spirit. So through God's grace, we were, helped to, we were able to help many children. Maybe James, you know, when you edit it, you can cut that portion, um, James, so you can do that. The voice of God, you know, sometime, very seldom this happens. God comes in and call like he did to Samuel. 
Samuel, Samuel, when he was sleeping and he woke up and he thought Eli called him. Even to Eli, he said, I didn't call you. So sometimes the voice of God comes directly to you about what you're supposed to do and you just do it as he told you. When God says a word, don't make it a sentence. That is very important, people of God. If God has told you only one word, don't construct a sentence with that word. You get into trouble. Because many people do that. They're trying to construct a sentence. One guy came and told me, <laughs> Abraham, I, me and my wife, you know, no, I had a dream that we are giving communion to somebody. That's the dream he had. So what he thought was that he is now called to be a pastor. No, God did not call him to be a pastor just because you have a dream about giving communion. Another guy in that I know, he was a businessman. You know, he had some theophony or something that he's teaching God's word. So he left his business. He is an excellent businessman, a CEO of a company. And he left his company and he said, oh, now God is calling me to teach his word. So I had to quit my job or that business and become a pastor. That's the most terrible mistake he ever made in his life. He is a good CEO. That is his anointing. That is his grace. So when God gives you a word, don't construct a sentence. <laughs> Hello, Dean. Good to see you. Nervlin, Freddie, everybody's here today. Yeah, don't try to help God, please. He doesn't need any help. Circumstances. Sometimes God uses circumstances to call us. Like Esther, as I mentioned, Esther was not, I don't know what she dreamed to do. I hope as an orphan girl, he never thought to becoming a queen is never a possibility in the natural. But the circumstances around her create an opportunity which brought her to the palace and the rest is history. And sometimes God can use our circumstances in our family situation, in our relationships, the religious background, any circumstances he can use, anything and everything. The next one is your relationship, who you are connected to. Association is very important in the kingdom. Who, do you, who are you associated with? You can hit or miss God's calling. Like Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and all these people were brothers. They were working together. What if they were in two different denominations? One was a Baptist and a Pentecostal. They would have missed God's calling. <laughs> but they were together in the business. James and Peter and John and Andrew. They were working with their father. Thank God there was no denomination at that time. <laughs> Thomas, you were laughing, my brother. Provision. Where is the provision comes from? How does God is providing for you could be a key to your calling, what you're called to do? Because God, your provision is always in the place of your calling. And that's how God works. I think the last one is dreams. God spoke to Joseph in a dream that he's going to be somebody great someday. And that dream stayed with him. Is there a dream that stays with you for the rest of your life that you saw maybe when you were 10 years old, 12 years old? Just like Joseph had. That could be a sign, a key to discover what you're called to do. So I have these many keys here, but they are not exclusive. God can use a donkey to speak to you what you're called to do. Or you can send a, send a bird. So I want you to watch this video about 
that showing about what are we called to do versus what we end up doing in life. Question, what are you called to do? I ask that question because we won't be judged according to what we did in life, but rather what we were called to do in life. Imagine with me standing before the throne of God and a scenario like this occur. Evangelist Anderson, come forth and give an account of your stewardship on earth. E evangelist Anderson, I, I'm not an evangelist. I, I, I'm an accountant. I, 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 I had an accounting front. I had an evangelist Anderson. Where are the 347,566 souls I called you to impact in Asia, son? Where are they? I, I, I'm, an, I, I'm an accountant. I, I had an accounting firm. I, I, I help churches. I help ministries with their, their, their finances. Son, where are the 347,566 souls in Asia I called you to impact? Son, where are they? Had you sought me, had you sought my face, I would have revealed this to you. Accountant Jones, step forward and give an account of your stewardship. Uh, Accountant Jones? No, I, no, I'm not. I passed for 35 years. I, I, I had a, a membership of 750 people uh, accountant jones i called you to the marketplace had you done this you would have significantly impacted two people you and those two men would have helped churches with their finances and those churches would have impacted 751,321 souls if you would have sought me i i would have revealed this to you Sister Smith, come forth and give an account of your stewardship. Oh, I, oh, I, did I only raised three children. I, I never preached to, to nations. I, I never even been on a, a missionary trip. I, I only tried my hardest to raise my children in your way. Sister Smith, I never called you to preach to nations. I never called you to go to other countries on missionary trips. I called you to raise three children. And let me show you one million five hundred seventy nine thousand five hundred forty one souls those three children impacted you sought me and you heard my voice you were obedient to my call well done my good and faithful servant Enter into the joy of your Lord. So remember, in regards to the calling that's on your life, you won't be judged according to what you did. You will be judged according to what you were called to do. No, that is so scary, but it is very important in life. We'll be judged based on what we are called to do, not what we did with our life. So whatever that is, if God calls you to be a mother, that is a wonderful calling. You don't have to be doing anything supernatural. Um, stand, you know, Whatever he has called it to do, 
finding comfort and satisfaction in it. And may the Lord help us do that because to run a nation, to run a kingdom, just like in the Bible. You know, I went to God with this problem recently because those who coming out of the kingdom school, like I said before, they can't find where they fit. And sometimes I wonder, they come out with this mindset of that everybody has to be on the limelight or the spotlight and have to have a crowd following them. I said, Lord, how does it work? You know, that's when he said the nation, the kingdom is not in place, just like the nation of Israel. Even somebody who is called to deliver milk, that is their calling. Maybe their calling is to milk the cow. <laughs> we need somebody to milk the cow, you know. So to, to wherever God puts you in, whatever, you don't need to have this extraordinary success according to the world standard. What is success according to God's kingdom is doing what he has created us to do. So that is the lesson for the day. Next week when we come back, we will study and discovering and mastering your gifts. Once you identify what you're called to do, God is faithful to give us the gifts. We don't have to be jealous. We don't have to go after anybody's gifts. There is gift waiting in you. So what is the key? Maximize the opportunity that you have right now. Instead of just waiting for this big day, for this big door to open, just like I did, I started teaching the Sunday school children. That's where I started. Maximize the opportunity that you have right now. What is the door that is open, baby? Whether it is a small, big, or whatever. Instead of waiting for the Big Bang, And for TV cameras to newscasters to come looking for you, <laughs> start where you have, where you are with what you have. And the good thing is, whatever God has called you to do, you have what it takes right now to start it, to do it. Everything is there, right there in front of you, right inside you. It is there. So it's like they say, a thousand mile journey starts with one step. And when you take that one step, God opens the next door, then the next door, then the next door comes. So may the Lord help us do that. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for your calling upon our life. Thank you for your calling upon Samuel, upon Victoria, upon Dan, Danuta, Fineha, Shirley, Thomas, Elodine, Freddie, Nervlin. Techno Spark, whoever that is, Father, and Natoya, I bless them with your grace and with your favor to discover your calling, Father, and to flow in it. And we'll be faithful that we will hear from you saying, Faithful and wonderful servant, enter into my rest. I thank you for your calling upon our life and help us to be faithful, Father, with what you have given us. We bless you, we love you. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus Christ's holy name. We pray. Everybody said, Amen and Amen. Amen. Ready? How are you doing? I'm blessed, my apostle. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> what, what's happening there? No, the Lord is actually doing something, apostle. People are really. We are being blessed, and they are even wishing that they were supposed to be having another meeting today. They were supposed to be joining also in this meeting, but I said they will join in next year for this club, this course. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, the good news is those who want to take the next course, the registration has opened. If you haven't taken the first course, I would encourage you to take those who haven't. Um, so this is my favor to ask you. I asked in yesterday's class, because I'm teaching this course on for free, I'm not charging it. I know some of you bought the books. 
please introduce the kingdom school to two of your friends on Facebook, wherever it is, call them. If you don't have any friends, make new friends. Go to the grocery store. <laughs> Go to the grocery store and smile at somebody and tell them, hey, there's a kingdom school. There's a crazy guy called Abraham Joan teaching about your purpose. You should come and learn before. So, so introduce the kingdom school to two of your friends, please. That's my favor. I'm asking in return for teaching the school. And the second favor I'm asking is that you would make a video. If this course has blessed you or impacted you, you know, make a video on your phone, like an one minute video, two minute. You don't have to preach. You don't have to write a book. And if you're too, too shy to do a video, write to me, write a testimony. No need to write a book. Just a two paragraph testimony saying how this course has blessed you and impacted you. I would appreciate it. So this is the fifth lesson. We have just one more. Um, one more lesson next week. That'll be six weeks. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's already five weeks are over. It's like a marathon. Victoria, you're taking all these courses. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> So any questions, comments? Oh, the third favor? No, I'm not going to say that. Send me a million dollars for Kingdom Nation. No. <laughs> so any questions, comments, or feedback? Yes, Victoria. Right, I have a question. Mm. Um, let me just have written it down here. Um, And my understanding is that not everybody is going to have a vision, but everybody is going to have an assignment. Is that correct? Because uh, as far as I've seen so far is that vision usually takes longer. And usually, usually, I'm not saying that it, this is always the case, but usually God gives the vision to someone at an early age. And then for the older people, God gives dreams. Right. So that's what I was thinking. Could it be possible that not everybody will receive a vision from God, but everybody does have a calling or does have an assignment? You could say like that. But for me, I treat vision, assignment, calling. It's all the same thing. Because yes. whatever you call to do, it's your vision. It's your dream. It's your assignment. Okay. Okay. In that case, it's, it's because I'm, I'm trying to differentiate between a vision and then your assignment. You could be under someone else's vision, helping like the like a pass like a piece in a puzzle. Yeah. You know, just like 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 um. You know, Paul, you, you mentioned in one of the courses that, that, that Paul needed an, an Ananias. Ananias calling was for him to be and lay hands on Paul. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that was his calling. But Ananias was not under anyone, anyone's vision, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know if I'm making sense, but. <laughs> so you were saying, you're thinking like a long term thing, like an assignment is like a yes, yes. short term thing that you accomplish. Yes. You know? Yeah, I know how you come up with that. No, I understand how you think okay. about that. So, you know, like Ananias, that, that was like a specific task within his vision because Ananias was already called by God. Okay. So then God came in and said, now go to Saul, lay hands on him, pray for him. And that was like, that like a specific assignment within the vision or the overall picture of his calling. Okay. You know? Okay. So vision could be formed in different tasks, different things that you're doing in different seasons of your life. Okay. Just like in David then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But Thank you. Uh, 
Anybody else have any question, comments, or feedback, please? Yes, Abraham. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Good. Um, when was the first time that the kingdom was mentioned in the New Testament? When was the first time the good kingdom? I think Matthew 4, 17. No. Yeah. No. Let's repent, repent for the kingdom. Oh, was that with uh, John the Baptist? No, that was with Jesus. Oh, John the Baptist also said, actually, in Matthew chapter 3, repent for the yeah. kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. Uh, why did he say repent? Because we messed up in the way we are thinking. Now go back to the original way of thinking. Repentance means going back to the original way we used to think before the fall of Adam. How Adam used to think. Okay. So, so anytime you were you see the word with the R E prefix R E in English means you're doing it again. Repent, renew, restore, rebuild, repent. Or the Lord saying, come back. Return, yeah. Return to his, return to the kingdom. Yeah. And the kingdom of heaven was at hand because of Jesus was there. No, he came to announce the arrival of the kingdom. Did you take the first course yet, Michelle? <laughs> Not really. I, Not really? I should. I will take it. I will take yeah, it. Yeah, you I, need to. Because I, I have this book. I have this great book. Where did I put it? Oh. Heaven on Earth about the uh, kingdom. And today, uh, November 9th, they talked about repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So I just was, yeah. So at I mean, hand means near. Kingdom of heaven is at hand or near. It's about to come. It's almost here. That's what it means. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Abraham, this is Thomas. I have a, I have a, one thing you said really, really hit with me. And uh, a lot of times the devil talks to you and he says, uh, you know, you, you, you weren't called because your works aren't good or you're not smart enough or whatever. And that thing where you said, God didn't call me according to my works or my holiness. Yes, he just called me according to his purpose. So get out of my face, you know. And so for a lot of times, the Babylonian system teaches us that we have to have a certain qualification to do anything. You need a bachelor's degree. You need a whatever. And so a lot of times you, I find myself like when I want to talk to people, they're like, well, you're not a minister. You're not training you. Who are you to start talking to this whole group of people? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that's a, that's a, I, I feel that's a deep mindset that you have to have a certain kind of a qualification before you can do anything. You understand my question? Yeah. You don't need it. Yeah, people say you had to have a PhD, which is permanent head damage. Yeah, just do it like, <laughs> a, Nike, just like a Nike commercial. <laughs> if, if, if you need a PhD to fulfill your calling, go and get it. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> but you don't need that to be qualified for God to call you. Right. You know, it's not according to our works. What we did or didn't do, nothing to do with it. So we had to get out of ourselves. Yeah. Self-importance and trusting God and thanking him for his grace. Yep. So it's all about grace. Mm -hmm. So we just heard like he called us before time began. It all happened there. And if you need an education to fulfill your calling, go and get it. That's where it's supposed to work. You're supposed to discover your purpose and your calling and your gifts. Then you choose the area of your education, what you need to be trained in. Then you go. Yeah, I did that, it backwards. I did it backwards, so I'm kind of backtracking. <laughs> most people do because they go and get an education, spend all this money. You know, like 75%, they say, in America, they go to college to get a degree, but then 
they're old, they don't do nothing with it because they are doing something entirely different than what they went to college for. But they should have taken this course first before they went to college. <laughs> You're going to save a lot of trouble, a lot of money and time, a lot of pain. And people get into debt, educational loan, oh my gosh, then they get stuck. Better now than never, right? <laughs> yeah. Marilyn, I see your hand. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Michelle, for that. God bless you. Yes. Please me unmute it. Your mic is muted. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi, Abraham. I have a question. Um, earlier you said um, that we, I think you read in Ephesians, we have to make our calling and election sure. And um, my question is, is there is a... Um, theological debate about whether everybody has the opportunity to be saved or um, God has handpicked certain people to be mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. Now, I am of the belief that salvation is for all and the calling is for all, but then I want you to clarify that for me because I've, I have found myself in a very um, hot and, um, you know, constant debate about that. Mm. And I mean, like, someone is trying to get me to change my belief that mm. salvation and the, the calling of God is an every man's life mm. or am i wrong to think that so if you I, could clarify that for me i believe salvation is for everyone you know like bible says god wills that none should perish exactly that's the bible says you know that uh, the acceptable year of the lord for everyone all mankind the opportunity is given. You know, that is the age old debate between Calvinism and Arminianism. You know, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. They both are wrong. <laughs> There's no such thing in the Bible. You know, God's announcement, mm -hmm. the salvation is opportunities for everyone. But does everybody choose it? No. But the opportunity is given to everybody. Everybody needs to be saved. God's will is that none should perish. Not he selected few and the others he destined to go to hell. Then that won't be justice in his part. Amen. Amen. So um, that election, is it talking about something entirely different than what um, the religion of, you know, this, con this religious Christianity and all of the other doctrines are talking about. Yeah, that election is, you know, like it based on foreknowledge of God. Even though the opportunity is given to everybody, God knows who's going to choose who's not. Amen. That is called the foreknowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Great. So, Thank you very much. So, um, okay. You're welcome. There's another thing that I wanted to just share. Um, I went to a, to a museum and, um, you know, I, I was walking around and saw this space station that NASA wants to build in, uh, on the moon. And they have identified six different reasons why hum, human beings should inhabit the moon. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that might not be in line with our 
calling on purpose right now, but it does tie in with um, calling. And I also was, I also saw and know that there are over 500 million galaxies that have been discovered by this by scientists and um i just had this crazy thought i don't know if it is crazy or if it makes any sense but i just wanted to share it that maybe i was thinking that god wants us to you know really colonize this earth for him right and to um bring the kingdom of god on earth Mm -hmm. so would it be possible that we are the first prototype and then once we get it right probably he would send us to other galaxies to Mm -hmm. do the same thing Mm -hmm. you're right really (laughs) (laughs) this is where we start (laughs) that's what i believe (laughs) <laughs> don't don't ask me any Bible really? to support it, but I believe you know not five hundred galaxies. There are millions of planets around. Yeah, yeah. You know, God created them all for a reason. And, and and I was thinking that possibly this is what eternity looks like, right? We will be doing that for eternity colonizing the different inhabited planets or habitable planets bringing his kingdom because I remember um, you were saying that um, I I can't remember whether it was Bridget or one of them or you um, you were saying that we we first have to bring the economy like heaven on earth. I, I kind of lost my trend of thought there, sorry. But um, again, just bringing the culture of heaven on earth mm-hmm. and um, that way we would um, Jesus, God wants to colonize you know like a a king has different territories right so this one will be the first and then we he expands his territory because he is a king Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that's interesting Hmm. thank you for for (laughs) confirming that i mean in some way (laughs) that's interesting okay okay uh, God bless you. Bless and you. God bless all of you. Thanks. Finahas, I see your hand. Brother, kingdom greetings, brother. Kingdom greetings. Yeah. Uh, today, I heard a very powerful word from the Holy Spirit God. That is, in the kingdom, out of calling is a crime. <laughs> yeah. That is the, the common. Function the outside of common. calling is a crime in God's kingdom. Okay, that is uh, only I give the comment. I have so much to talk, brother, but the time is uh, 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 so much is there. Uh, that's why I'm stopping here, brother. Only comment. I got that a powerful word from the Holy Spirit God. Thank you, brother. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for being part of the Kingdom School. Please pray for the Kingdom School, God, to expand. If you want to teach this to other people, go for it. I will give you the material, whatever you need, you know, because that's the only hope. Because people's head is damaged, (laughs) brain is damaged. (laughs) You need to get it right into the right track so this world can function the way it's supposed to be. So thank you, and each of of you are my heroes. So God bless you guys. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.